Welcome to the Lily Meadows channel. Today is August 9th, 2021. And we are in unprecedented days where we are beginning to see the head of Leviathan in our, in our very sights. Not just the church in a spiritual sense that we see darkness rising, but the whole world is seeing a medical communism rising up justifying itself to take away human freedom for the sake of safety. But everyone can see right through that farce. And we are here we are. What does God say about the day we're in? We are in Malachi 2, verse 16. For the man who do does not love his wife but divorces her, says to the Lord, the God of Israel, covers his garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. So guard yourselves in your spirit and do not be faithless. Living on this planet today, unfaithful to those we are supposed to be faithful to, has a high price today. You have wearied the Lord with your words, but you say, how have we wearied him? By saying, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights in them. Or by asking, where is the God of justice? Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who, are, who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. Regardless of our ideology, our end time theology, each one of us has to ask God and ask ourselves, in the moment we're standing in, who can stand when he appears? We're talking about creator God who created every intricacy of nature and also has a plan and will be glorified in his plan. He prophesied things that are about to happen and we will see it happen because he is God. Are you going to be able to stand before him when he comes? This is what it's going to be like. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord, but who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? Amen. For he is like a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and in former years. Your life is an offering to God. How are we going to stand in his presence? Jesus is coming. Not sure what that will look like, but we understand for sure Jesus is coming and there's a little bit more that will give some insight into the time that we're in. The Lord testifies of himself in your wherever you are. Thank you, God, that you love them so much. In Jesus' name. How do we stand? We stand by his blood. The blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, he died for us. His blood is upon us when we stand up and he comes, when we stand up before him, even whether he is literally coming in the sight of all, right? Or whether you're just standing in his presence like right now when you're watching this video, when I'm speaking, he's here. I am in his presence and so are you. When the blood of Jesus is over our lives, and we have repented of our sin and put it on him who took our penalty. He knew no sin and he took our sin. And we are set free.
from the bondage of death that was a result of the sin that you and I committed, we are free. So that when he comes, that's the simplicity of the gospel. That's reality. It's, it's immaterial what people's theology is and when, how many times they go to church and what they do, who they give money to. It's all irrelevant in that, I mean, God does love a cheerful giver and he loves to bless the poor and, and to bless people. And to bless his house. He loves that. But what is actually the only thing that we're going to stand on is the Lord Jesus Christ. Alone. Him himself. Not our works for him or anything like that. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. Have you ever wondered why doesn't he just blow the whole thing up? When you see certain things on TV like Sodom and Gomorrah, have you ever wondered how can he, how can God, and they dishonor him, they worship other gods right in front of him. Even if they don't bow down, they worship viruses, they change their whole life out of fear, they're so afraid of. What you fear and give your attention to and change your life for is what you worship Right in front of God, we worship idols. I mean, I hope I don't. God, please. It's serious. And I hope if you don't want to worship idols, just tell them, I don't want to worship idols. God, I'm sorry. It's much more subtle than we think, but yet it's same consequence, same demonic presence will come into your life when you worship the false God. God doesn't change. Therefore, we're not consumed. I've wondered a number of times why he doesn't just get me, why he allows me to still be here. You know, after I fuss at him and complain, after I've been so blessed and I sit there and complain about something, or I or I doubt he's going to take care of me, when I know he's taken care of me for 22, for my whole life, for 22 years of my saved life, I've walked with him. If I doubt him now, I dishonor him, and, and I do sometimes, and he still doesn't, He's patient. He doesn't change. Maybe he sees me in what I'll be in a thousand years as I'm doing what I'm doing. And he's, he knows I'll be different someday. And he can endure my moment now because of that. Maybe that's how he does it. One thing we know is that he doesn't change. And that's why we're not consumed. From the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me. We're not keeping. America in the year 2021 is not keeping his statutes. Right? We haven't even turned to repent to him as the second round of virus seems to be trying to take over the world with dominion to control us for our safety, which is what all the conquerors say to people. I'm sure if they bother to um, get their to get them to buy into it. I mean, in the old days, conquerors would just come and kill them all and take them as slaves. Today, there's more of us than there are of them, so they have to get us the enemies. Whoever they are, I don't know, the enemy, the spiritual enemies, the devil, the angels that fell from God, and the demons, they, ha they have to get your agreement, our agreement in order to be able to do it because there's more of us than there are of them. And so if they can get us to buy into it through deception, they can basically take us over right under our nose. They think it's hilarious how stupid people are. Um, I know who's going to be laughing at the end. And it's not the, demon, the demons and the evil angels and the devil. How do I know that? Because God is just and he's righteous. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. And there's more in this um, in chapter 3. You say to me it is vain to serve God. What is the profit of our keeping his charge and walking with him? We don't see him. He doesn't show up in my life. I don't, I don't see him in my room. What's the profit? Why don't I just go and do my own thing? I get more profit out of that than I do out of trying to trust in an invisible God. God's been hiding. 
and he loves you. If you're watching, he's drawing you to himself. So this is what's going on. In the midst of the darkness and the chaos and the people realizing that they had been deceived, because it's becoming obvious now to anyone with a brain, because nothing makes sense what they're saying. This is what's happening to you and I who fear the Lord. The Book of Remembrance, Malachi 3, 16. <clears throat> then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. They paid attention and heard them. The Lord paid attention and heard them. We're talking about the one who decides everything. The Creator paid attention and heard me and you. He heard you when you were talking. And a book of remembrance was written before him. It's pretty exciting to be living in days like today because when you say things like, I know God's got this, and it's like my daughter. They made a new rule that, that pretty much seals me into homeschool um, for the, probably the rest of my life. This, is, this has been difficult. I love I love it, but I'm not going to lie. Homeschooling is difficult in that my children don't have a... They, I'm trying my best to get co-ops going and, and all. But my children don't have a, a... They're not in society if they can't go to school. Well, they mandated now where I live full masks all day. That's my... I mean, that's... I can't, you know, I can't ask my child to put something over their breathing for eight hours a day for no reason because the kids touch it and they get spit everywhere. How is that making more health sense? So it's just as insane. It's insane to me why it's got to be spiritual. It's like captivity. It's, it, the school will look like a prison camp. I can't send my kid there. There's another thing that the state, a different states are trying to do is they're trying to get be able to test your child and my child for corona without parent consent and send your child's saliva off to a lab without parent consent. So when you when you sign your kid up to school, you're giving them over to the state for their medical decisions to be made not by you as a parent. Sounds like communism. They're also trying to get a passport in which Everybody has to be vaccinated in order to enter a place of business. It takes out the whole freedom of choice that our nation is built on. Okay, so you look at the situation here and you're like, whoa, and, I, and I, I'm feeling upset talking to my husband. My children, our children can't go and to be in society because I'm not going to trust the state with my child now. It's changed. Whoa. Right? Maybe it was always like this, we just couldn't see it, but heck, right? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Every, every mother who hears that hears a warning in their spirit. No. As soon as they're going to do medical things to your child without your consent, every mother's alarms go off there. What? Like, they cross the line. I think all mothers, I mean, I hope mothers will see that and be shocked, and then maybe we'll form um, homes homeschool schools. You know, we'll, we'll find a culture and a social group that we can all join into since we can't send them into the state school. <laughs> wow, okay, here we are. Thank you, Lord. But, I'm, you know, I'm getting a little upset talking to my husband. <laughs> my daughter comes in and she's like, Mom, God already knows what's going to happen. Why are you worried? He's got everything in his control. Yes, my daughter. You're right. So God wrote that down when she said that. He wrote that down. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them. The book of remembrance, a book of remembrance, was written before him for those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. Just like my daughter did. They shall be mine says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession and I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. 
Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked. The word of the Lord. At this time, now, you will see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked. Clear as day. Even the ones hiding in sheep's clothing, in Jesus' name, are all becoming apparent. Whatever something is, is manifesting what it is as the Lord comes closer and closer in the name of Jesus. There's no more hiding behind deception. What something is, is going to be seen for what it is. It may be crazy and intense for a little while, would be my guess, if we begin to actually see what's happening. But if you trust in the Lord, he and speak with faith and hope in him, he will make you his treasured, his treasured possession. And I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. Thank you. Yesterday, my husband and I were walking in the park and we were talking about the passport in New York City where they're literally saying you cannot buy, sell, or trade unless you are willing to get the shot. Okay, what? What? That's not America. I've never even, they could, they, I was a teacher and you have to sign a form in order to take a child's picture. You had to sign a consent form. Because people were thought to have freedom over their bodies and over their children's bodies. So, what? Right? It's not even an approved vaccine and they're, they're mandating it. It's insane. So, my husband and I are like, this is too crazy. It's too crazy. And a huge beam of light came from the sky. And I felt God's presence. And I knew he was saying to, to us, I'm here. Because it's the same spirit. Because we were talking. It was, it's the same spirit that moved Hitler. They're coming after us. The devil, the evil, is coming after us somehow. That's what he does. I mean, that's... So, I saw this huge beam of light come from... It was behind us. Huge, powerful beam. Like, heavenly beam. And you know what, he, and that same beam is coming to you in this video because his presence comes to you wherever you are, whenever you're watching. You're very loved. And they shall be mine. And I will make them a treasured possession and spare them. Perhaps it may be that we may be hidden in the day of his fierce wrath. If you want that, just ask. God, I want to be hidden in the day of your fierce wrath coming. Hide me under the shadow of your wing. And those listening, if they are asking you to cover them, please do so now, forever. And he's just drawing you into himself. He loves you. You wouldn't be watching unless you were seeking him. For behold, <clears throat> chapter 4, the day of the Lord is coming. Oh wait, then once again more, you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked. That's his statement, and that it will happen so clearly. All the facades will be moved. Between one who serves God and one who does not serve him, it will be night and day. Growling demon versus light beam. Amen. That's just reality. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall or like children from recess. Calves in a stall can't run very fast. They want to go. They want to go. We're getting released from this place of confinement. That's what he's saying. Like children to recess. You, in your very life, in your moment with God right now, are being released. He's opening the gate and giving you wide space to run and be what you were created to be, just like a calf, just like a child run and scream and be free 
not confined. So isn't that interesting? As the enemies are trying to close us in, take away our choices and take dominion over our very bodies that God gave us to have dominion over our own bodies. They, tra they, tr they violate, they transgress, they trespass. So what does God do? He burns them up. They're going to be set ablaze. But for you who fear my name, that's what he's going after. He's got this fire going and he's looking for people who are reaching their hands up to him. And that would be you if you're watching. And God, I pray that all across the earth that you will move, Holy Spirit, and people will lift their hands up to you in this, in this intense moment in time that we're in. That we will lift our hands up to you and you will receive us and give us this. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet. I receive that, Lord. On the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts, remember the law of my servant Moses and his statutes and rules, and I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Remember the word of the Lord. Remember the Bible. There are precepts here that will help us grow and be close to God, including the one that we're reading. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. Let us repent. Quickly, I'm going to close, and I'm just going to read this as an announcement. This is Enoch 45, parable the second. Respecting these who deny the name of the habitation of the holy ones and of the Lord of spirits. Heaven they shall not ascend, nor shall they come on the earth. This shall be the portion of sinners who deny the name of the Lord of spirits, and who are thus reserved for the day of punishment and of affliction. In that day shall the elect ones sit upon a throne of glory, and shall choose their conditions and countless habitations, while their spirits within them shall be strengthened. This is the ones that fear the Lord and honor him. As he treads down the wicked, he's lifting you up. And he's choosing your count, your conditions, your places to where you dwell with him and enjoy his presence. While their spirits within them shall be strengthened when they behold my elect one, the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall choose them for those who have fled for protection to my holy and glorious name. In that day I will cause my elect one to dwell in the midst of them. Jesus said, I will be with you. If two or more are gathered in my name, I will be with you. He dwells in the midst of us who honor and love him will change the face of heaven, will bless it, and illuminate it forever. I will also change the face of the earth, will bless it, and cause those whom I have elected to dwell upon it. But those who have committed sin and iniquity shall not inhabit it. For I have marked their proceedings. My righteous ones will I satisfy with peace. Placing them before me. How are we righteous? but by the blood of Jesus Christ, he put over our lives. It's not even by what you do or don't do. It's just based on him. His blood on the cross makes you righteous before God. He will satisfy you with peace, placing them, you, before me. But the con condemnation of sinners shall draw near that I may destroy them from the face of the earth. And there we will behold the ancient of days. So God, we thank you for today. We thank you for standing up to protect us and that you do care what we say in faith and write it down. We honor your holy name. We give you all the glory and we ask you to give us vision and wisdom and that we know we dwell under your shadow as we trust in your holy name through the storm. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thank you for watching.